Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. 3D video. It's one of those things that we're constantly being promised is going to be better than ever. From Hollywood blockbusters that you have to pay an extra seven bucks to see in real D, to the Nintendo 3DS, which works without even needing those dorky glasses. But the consensus among moviegoers and gamers alike is that current 3D offerings are more than a little bit underwhelming, with words like unnecessary, distracting, and... Bleah! Sorry, nausea-inducing used to describe the experience. So why is it in 2017, nearly a hundred years after the first 3D feature film hit the theaters, that 3D consumer technology is still so terrible? Well, it turns out that the human brain is pretty hard to trick into thinking that something is actually real and immersive, when it's really just a projection on a flat surface. You see, when we look at an object in the 3D space of the real world, our eyes are just trying to focus on that object alone. But when we're looking at a 3D movie or a video game, our eyes need to stay focused on the screen while they're simultaneously trying to focus on the object. Now, because the virtual objects look like they're somewhere between the screen and our faces, it's not something we're at all used to doing in the real world. And it's a very tough problem for our brains to figure out how to resolve. And of course, the sharply defined edge of the screen doesn't help the sense of immersion either, meaning the resulting 3D image looks less than realistic. And that's also where the queasiness I mentioned earlier comes in. So let's talk about some of the problems that specifically affect movies. The Real-D branded 3D system that you commonly see in movie theaters works with dual projectors and glasses that polarize light in different directions for your left and right eye. So each eye gets a slightly different image to fool your brain into thinking that it's seeing something three-dimensional. But unfortunately, filtering out half the light has led to complaints that modern 3D movies are not only unconvincing, but that they're also way too dark to enjoy. So given the price, a little buyer's remorse is understandable. Home solutions have also been fraught with problems, requiring bulky power glasses, which you can learn more about right up here, very expensive television sets, pricier copies of the same movie, or at the very least, a halving of the vertical resolution so that each eye only sees what it's supposed to. Oh yeah, and everyone watching has to look like a dipstick. There's also the minor matter of how these movies are produced in the first place. Some films are produced specifically with 3D in mind. A dual-lens stereoscopic camera rig that can capture 3D images natively is needed for the best results. Avatar was a notable example of this done correctly, and animated films can have this effect applied with virtual cameras after the fact. Now, although doing this doesn't eliminate all the problems associated with 3D, it generally makes for a more pleasant experience than the many other films that were actually shot in 2D and cheesily converted to 3D later on. You can think of this a little bit like how video games ported from console to PC are so often disappointing, which you can learn more about up here. Well, except a little worse. And speaking of games, what about the 3DS? Well, thanks to Nintendo's use of a parallax barrier, which is a series of slits placed over the backlight illuminating some pixels towards your left eye and some towards your right eye, there are no brightness issues and you don't need glasses. But unfortunately, the physical slits can severely restrict viewing angles, which is why the 3D effect doesn't work nearly as well if you tilt your screen more than just a little bit. When you combine that with the system's low resolution and lower refresh rate than what you get at the cinema, it isn't surprising that many people were instead clamoring for a clamshell-style 2DS, which of course Nintendo ultimately did give us. And desktop PC gaming in Stereo 3D had a similarly short 15 minutes of fame in the form of NVIDIA's 3D Vision, which required a supported monitor, a supported graphics card, specific glasses, and validated games for the best experience. So it's probably not surprising it didn't take off. Now with that said, with the rise of high quality VR headsets like the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, consumers are beginning to enjoy 3D experiences at high refresh rates without flat projection screens that fill their entire field of vision, helping to alleviate some of the issues we've discussed. But with VR tech still attempting to catch on with game developers and other content providers, I do wonder if we'd just be better off waiting for someone to invent a real-life version of the Star Trek holodeck if we really want convincing 3D.
And speaking of three dimensions, are you ready to add a new dimension to your browsing experience? Well then check out TunnelBear VPN, which lets you tunnel to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you're in a different country. They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and a Chrome extension. When you turn TunnelBear on, two things happen. First, your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption. Second, your public IP address gets switched, so you can show up as if you're in a different country. TunnelBear lets you bypass all the annoying details that typically come with using a VPN for personal use. There's no need to mess around with port configurations, DNS, or any other router settings. TunnelBear handles all of that in the background. They also have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log user activity. And right now, you can try out TunnelBear with 500 megabytes of free data with no credit card required. And if you want a seven-day free trial, just head over to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode of Tech Quickie. Like, dislike, check out our other channels. We're always doing super fun things over on Channel Super Fun. And leave a comment with your suggestions for future videos. Maybe you want to hear more about tech that does work well, that isn't horrible modern 3D or whatever. So just let me know, and also don't forget to hit subscribe.